Hello everyone, today we are going to be naming covalent compounds. So remember the difference between ionic and covalent is that ionic was between a metal and non-metal. Covalent bonds are formed between non-metals. We'll count metalloids as non-metal, so they would be named as covalent compounds. Okay, the main thing here, don't worry about that, uh, is that you're going to use prefixes for covalent compounds. So make sure you know these prefixes. One is mono, two is di, three is tri, four tetra, five penta, six is hexa, seven hepta, eight octa, nine nana, and ten deca. All right, there are two steps to naming covalent compounds. First, we name the first non-metal. And there's only uh, one simple rule is that if there's only one of them, we don't use a prefix. So something like this, there's only one of those carbons. We wouldn't use a prefix for that carbon. But if there is more than one, like N2O5, there's two of them here, then we would use the appropriate prefix. So let's take a look at those examples again and see how we, we would name it. So again, CO2, this is a chemical that many of you know. Because there's only one carbon, we don't use a prefix. So in other words, we never say mono to start with any of our covalent compounds. Because there are two nitrogens here, we use the appropriate prefix di-nitrogen. Okay, and then we name our second non-metal using the correct prefix and IDE ending. So here we always use a prefix for the second part. So CO2 is carbon dioxide. The second part has two oxygen, so we use two or di for two. And 2 O5, because there are five oxygens here, we're going to use pent oxide. Okay, so prefix for five is pent. So this is dinitrogen pentoxide when you put it all together. All right, how about you try an example here? Let's start with the first part and then we'll talk about the second part. So for Cl2, what do you think we would call this first part? So it's dichlorine because there are two chlorines and then we always want to use a prefix for the second part here. What do you think the second part's going to be? Mono is the prefix for one and then oxygen becomes oxide. So altogether, the correct answer is dichlorine monoxide. All right, how about you try a couple more of these examples? Uh, what do you think the name of this covalent compound is? Keeping those rules in mind. So again, if there's only one of these, we do not use a prefix for that first part. CO is carbon monoxide, a deadly gas. Um, so again, notice how we didn't use a prefix for the first part because there was only one of those nonmetals. So how about you try the second one? What do you think the answer is for PCL3? Phosphorus, and then the prefix for chlorine is going to be tri because there's three of them. Phosphorus trichloride. Again, make sure you remember to turn it into an IDE ending. And then lastly, we have CI4. CI4. So, what do you think this one's going to be called? Carbon. And then we have four iodine, so it becomes tetraiodide. A little weird name there, but that's what it's called. Okay writing molecular formulas. So from the name, you should also be able to write the formula. And so here, it's important to know the prefixes. Okay, remember if there's no prefix in the beginning of the first one, that just tells you there's one of that chemical. So altogether, what do you think the formula of this chemical is? So one phosphorus and three fluorines makes it PF3. 
How about you try one more of these? Carbon tetrachloride. What do you think the formula for this one's going to be? If you put CCL4, you are correct. Okay, so again, because there's no prefix here, um, that tells us that there's only one carbon. All right, two more examples to help you practice naming. Uh, what do you think NH3 is called? So nitrogen, trihydride, and then the last example, CCL4. What do you think the correct answer is here? Carbon tetra chloride.